How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 8 in my programming Leap Motion with Python series. Last video we went over getting data for each individual tool in the frame and now we're going to move on to working with gestures. I, if you recall uh, tutorial number 2 I believe, we uh, enabled the gestures in our controller specifically the circle gesture, the key tap gesture the screen tap gesture and the swipe gesture. We're going to do each of them one at a time. First one going to be the circle gesture. So I'm going to triple quote out this for loop. We don't need it for this tutorial. And it would just be extra text in the PowerShell window. So comment that out if you want. And now we are going to create a new for loop. So for gesture in frame dot gestures and then you want open close parentheses and a colon so it's going to return a gesture list a special list uh, part of the leap library and that gesture list we are going to uh, do uh, certain things with each different type of gesture that's detected so first we are going to uh, Actually, I'll say this. If you watch the Java one, we use the case switch statement. Instead, we are going to be using an if statement for the Python tutorials, not case switch. So, for the circle gesture, we're going to say if gesture, oops, gesture dot type more specifically. So, if the type of gesture equals equals leap dot gesture with a capital G dot type underscore circle all capitals for all those letters and then a colon then what we have to do is we have to create a circle gesture so right now our gesture that we're using in here is just a general gesture object so just like we had to in the Java series with Leap Motion, we have to typecast it to a circle gesture. So this is just a general gesture. We are going to uh, create a more specific gesture because each gesture has different data it can use or you can get from the gesture. So just to show you, so circle gesture Leap Motion. Um, okay, it'll give you a picture here. So that's the circle gesture, either, you know, with all your fingers extended, one finger extended, as long as you're doing a rotating motion, it picks that up most of the time. I think the out of all the gestures, the circle gesture is the one that leap motion picks up the easiest. That's the, well, that's what I've been finding anyway. So specifically for the Python one, you can see all the different stuff we can do with it. I'm going to touch on some of it, but not all of it. So to convert it to a circle gesture, we are going to create a new object called circle. And we're going to set that equal to circle gesture. And then we're going to pass in as a parameter our general gesture. And you'll remember circle gesture is one of the things we imported up here from the leap library. So make sure you have that line. Okay, that's taken care of. Now, what are we going to do with this circle object? First thing, we are going to determine if the circle is being drawn clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is going to be a long if statement, so bear with me. If circle dot pointable dot direction dot angle underscore 2 and then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in as a parameter to this angle underscore 2 is circle dot normal so the normal vector of the circle other also known as the uh, vector at a 90 degree angle to the palm of your hand so what we want to do here uh, with this angle to uh, the uh, normal vector. That's what we're finding here. The angle from 
uh, the pointable direction to the normal vector. And we're going to make this, we're going to say if it's less than or equal to leap dot pi divided by 2, well then in that case, um, it's clockwise. So we'll create a variable called clock wiseness, I guess. That's a good name for it. Definitely part of the English language. So clockwiseness is equal to clockwise else. Well then our clock wiseness is equal to counter clockwise. Alright. So now we know which direction our circle is being drawn in. What we are now going to find is the swept angle. So first time it picks up on a circle gesture, the swept angle is going to be zero because you haven't swept anything out yet. Corresponding circle gestures detected, the swept angle is going to represent how much further you have gone around the circle since the last circle gesture that was detected. So in that case, we're going to set swept underscore angle equals zero. And then, this is another if statement that's kind of long. Well, not really long, but it might be confusing. So if circle dot state equals, sorry, does not equal, if it does not equal leap dot gesture dot state underscore start start not start uh, colon so it's basically saying if the state of the circle is not in the start state which what I said the first time it was detected so if this is you know this circle has been detected before and you've continued the uh, the gesture, then we're going to calculate the angle that has been swept out. So what we're going to do is create a new variable called previous, set that equal to circle gesture, and then we're going to pass in, and this is where things are going to get a little confusing, controller, so our controller object, dot frame, and then in the uh, the parameters we're going to put in a one dot gesture and we're going to pass in circle dot id now let me explain that in a second i'm going to pause the video because this is about to all right i'm back the other video i was working on down here i could see it was almost compiled so i didn't want it to cause a disturbance in this tutorial but now to explain this what we are doing, we're creating a new circle gesture, which in this case represents the last circle gesture that was detected. And I've already made a spelling mistake. Okay, that's fixed now. So, let's explain this. Up here, we uh, created our frame by calling frame equals controller dot frame. Uh, open, close parentheses. So what this does is it calls the current frame, or you know, like the, the one that was just detected. So the most recent frame. But this is equivalent to putting in a zero there. So the first index of our list, that's the most recent one. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new circle gesture by calling our controller object and getting the frame before it. So zero was the most recent one, one is the one before that. So inside that frame, we are then I don't know if we've used it before. I think we have somewhere. Anyway, uh, we're going to then call the gesture list. And we are going to pass in as a parameter circle.id. I have mentioned several times in the series, each, uh, each gesture, each hand, each finger, each tool has a unique ID. As long as, you're, uh, as, long as it's still above the motion sensor, you don't remove your hand or anything, 
that gesture or that tool or that finger, it'll always have the same ID until you take your hand away and then bring it back, it'll have a new ID. So as long as this is the same circle gesture, it'll have the same ID, each one of the circle gesture datas that we're trying to get a hold of. So that's what we're doing here. We are creating a new circle gesture by pa or getting our controller uh, previous frame and then getting the uh, gesture of the same circle ID. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but that's how we're going to get our previous one. Now what we got to do, we're going to get our swept angle, so the angle it's swept between our previous and our current circle gesture. And here we're going to pass in, in these brackets, circle dot progress minus previous dot progress and then we're going to multiply it by 2 and then we're going to multiply it by leap dot pi and that's how we're going to get our swept angle so that is all the calculating we're going to do now let's print this data out just to get a visual representation of it just got to flip the page of my notes alright so here's going to be our print statement Alright, so print. And we are going to print out the ID, which is circle.id. Next, we are going to print out the progress. So how far we have gone around this circle in total, so how many times we've gone around, it'll give you a float value. So 5.5 .5 would mean we have gone around our circle five and a half times. So for that, uh, we're going to print out progress. And we are going to get a float for that by referencing. And before I forget, actually, we're going to put str around this circle ID. Otherwise, we'll get an error. All right, and then the same thing here. So str, and in the brackets, we are going to call circle dot progress all right now we are moving on to the radius of our circle which is in millimeters And we get this by converting to a string circle dot radius. Next is the angle, our, our swept angle. So swept angle. And for that, we are going to uh, put in the string representation of our swept angle. But what we are going to get is a number in radians. I hate radians personally. Never liked them. So I'm going to convert that to degrees. So leap dot rad, all capitals, underscore to underscore deg. And... No, I do not want a license. Next is which direction our circle is going. So for that, we are going to uh, just print out our clockwise-ness. It's got to be the greatest word in the English dictionary. I know I've heard it somewhere. Okay, and that should be everything. So let's go into Python, clear out everything from the last tutorial, and let's run this. So I am going to start drawing a circle right now, and I am in fact drawing it clockwise. Now I'm going to switch it up and go counterclockwise, which it's already picking up on. Now if I do both hands, 
going in opposite directions, it's really getting confused. <laughs> but still picking up pretty good. So I'm going to go clockwise for our last couple. Oh, come on. So when you stop your hand, you can see that uh, the angle, swept angle, turns to zero once I stop my hand because I wasn't moving at all. And let's just go over some of this. So not all of them had the same ID, but for the most part, they stayed similar. So it was detecting multiple circle gestures as I went around. The progress was different for each. So let me go around five times. Okay, once it starts picking up, I'll start counting. One, two, three, four, five. So it only picked up 0.89 there. Not good. I went around five times, but it was only picking up 0.89. So you can see some work that has to be done there on leaps part. But the radius seems about accurate. It's saying I had about an 8.2 centimeter radius. Pretty close, I would say. Uh, swept angle, no idea. Um, sure, we'll say. And I definitely was going clockwise in those last couple. So everything seems pretty good. That's all we're going to go over in this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Next time we'll go over our swipe gesture. Uh, please leave a comment on this video. Give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate all your support. And other than that, I will see you next time.